Hello, my name is Adam Hughes. I'm an application engineer with Go Engineer, and today we're going to take a look at SolidWorks interface in general, like a 101 to SolidWorks interface. So the first thing I'd like to direct your attention to are the icons here in the upper left-hand corner: File, Edit, View, Insert Tools. Uh, if you have Simulation added in or Routing added in, those will show up as well. Windows and Help. So File is very typical. You know, you can create a new document, save documents, etc., just like any other software that you've ever used, uh, Microsoft or anything like that. Um, edit, you can do your undos and rebuilds, some suppressing uh, options, just a general edit drop down. Very rarely find myself coming to this drop down to use anything, um, but it is there for our convenience. View, here's where we can turn off or on different types of uh, information that we can use in SolidWorks, for instance like axes or temporary axes, origins, uh, 3D sketches, if you like using the grid or not, you can turn that on or off. And sometimes uh, sketch relations can become cumbersome when you're dealing with a very complex sketch. And if you don't need to see them, you can go ahead and toggle them on or off anytime you like. Under insert, here's where we can find things like, uh, you know, insert components, um, insert part, insert part into a part, design tables, so on and so forth. Tools, we have the simulation express, uh, flow express, and part reviewer in assembly mode. We also have costing and part mode that are all free that come in every package of SOLIDWORKS. I encourage you to give those a shot and try those out. Uh, we can also go down to options and customize and add-ins and you know modify those anytime you like as well. Um, again, if you have simulation or any sort of add-on packages um, running, they will generally show up in this bar as well. So here under help, we see SOLIDWORKS help. We also see SOLIDWORKS tutorial, which I encourage you to go check out. There's lots of great learning information here. Uh, I've done just about every single one of them, and I would encourage everyone who has any motive to learn new tools in SOLIDWORKS to check these out. It's a great way, great free way, for you to uh, you know, enhance your skills at SOLIDWORKS, as well as prepare for some of the certifications that are online. All right, so I'll go ahead and close that out. The next thing I'd like to talk about is just this little uh, bar that's up here. These are just quick, quick shortcut icons that we can toggle to you know make drawing from part make assembly from part make uh, you know just document whichever one which, whatever you're working on you can document it in this next option it's a little shortcut it saves you a couple clicks you can open anything from here save anything print undo redo change your selection if you have if you want to select like toolbox components or just hidden components you can easily just do that here by modifying your select tool uh, rebuild custom properties, and then options. I figure this one is most commonly used amongst most users. You can go to options and you can change things like your drafting standard or units or image quality. So if you want your, your image to look a little sharper, you can boost this up and, and get a sharper image out of your computer. Um, the other one here was add-ins. So if we hit this little drop down here, we can change add-ins. And here we can activate you know, circuit works, simulation, again, simulations added in, uh, enterprise PDM, workgroup PDM, um, electrical, flow simulation, plastic, SOLIDWORKS inspection. All those can be added in here. If you check it on the right, these load in under startup. If you check it on the left, it's a one-time active load in. So each time you you'd load up SOLIDWORKS, you'd have, to, you'd have to put that check there in order for it to add in. Now, when you do have something added in, note that it shows up here in your command manager, command manager tabs. So this is your command manager, and these are your command manager tabs. At any point in time, you can right-click on the tabs of the command manager and then choose to, you know, toggle something off or on if it seems to be in the way. So it's like, oh, I'm not doing any electrical right now. Let's go ahead and turn that off, right? I'm just doing piping and tubing. Um, you know, here are your assembly icons. So any, any tool you're looking for um, in assembly can most likely be found here. If there is, not, if there is a tool that, you, that can't be found, no worries, you can always search it. So we can come up here like, oh, hey, where's my mass properties at? We can type in mass for mass properties, and then we can either activate mass properties here, or we can hit the little eyeglasses to show us where it's located. So if it's the eyeglasses, SOLIDWORKS will toggle to the correct tab and bring up a little arrow and hover our cursor over the icon and where it's at so we can find it for next time. If I choose, I can drag and drop. And if I don't want it there, I can hold the Alt key and drag and drop off. I can also activate the tool from this menu as well. 
So if I click on it, by simply clicking on it, I can activate it and bring up my mass properties of my component. The next thing I'd like to direct your attention to is the feature tree. So the feature tree is where we can find some general information, like front, top, right planes, etc. Um, in a part mode, we'd also see if we have multiple surface bodies or multiple part bodies. In the assembly mode, we can see all the parts that are comprised of our assembly. Um, how do we know we're in assembly mode? By this top icon right here. We see that that's an assembly icon. And if you're ever in doubt, only assemblies are the only ones that come with mates, right? So anytime you ever see this mate folder, then you know you're in assembly mode. Now, if you're in a part mode, and we go ahead and open up this part, this barrel, then now in our feature tree, we can see all the features that are involved in creating this component. So we'll quickly go back to our assembly and go over to the next icons. The next thing I'd like to show you is this bar right below your command manager. Here we can, uh, you know, select maybe a zoom to fit. We can do a zoom to area. We can toggle back previous views. We can create a section view of our part if you wanted. So if you wanted to see what the section view of this, um, you know, upper assembly looked like, then, you know, we can hit the green check there, take a look at the section view, see what all the parts look like internally and how they mate together. And so once we're done with that, we can just uncheck the section view and then kind of move on. So here is our display palette. So we can we can select different display styles, a top, front, left, right, back, bottom, ISO, normal to. Also, if you want to do normal, multiple views per screen, so I can toggle on the four and look at all four of them at the same time. And then I can simply go back to this icon and select single view and bring it back to my single view. The next thing uh, I can do is I can also change how this part is displayed, whether it be shaded, shaded with edges, wireframe, hidden lines visible, hidden lines removed, etc., etc. If I wanted to do wireframe, I can see I have a lot of stuff going on there. Maybe let's do a uh, hidden lines visible, hidden lines removed, looks pretty cool, and then shaded, and then shaded with edges. Shade that looks good, the best for presentation. This view icon here is just a quick shortcut and everything found here as far as views turning off and on can be also found here so all these icons the the only difference is that you know the icons have the name listed out and so once you get familiar with the icon and name then it makes it really quick and easy just to to mouse over to these icons and toggle them off and on and no worries if you can't quite remember the first time around you can always hover over it and it'll display what that icon does these next two items are responsible for changing the color of the part and then the background of the part. So if I wanted to change the background to, you know, I don't know, maybe like, a, I don't know, there we go, forest environment. Then we can see what the part looks like in a forest environment and zoom in, zoom out. Does it blend in? Well, sure, it looks pretty good. We can also change the color here if we wanted to. So if we want to change the color of the parts to see if it would blend better with something, you know, then we can also change that. I like the colors the way they are now, so I'll go ahead and leave it. And then we'll go ahead and change this back to three-point faded default. All right, this last icon here are your graphic settings. So you real view graphics, shaded and shade, shadows in shaded mode, ambient occlusion, and perspective view. Note that if you don't have a certified graphics card, you will not be able to use the real view graphics. Certified graphics card list can be found at SolidWorks.com. Type in graphics under search, and you can see if your graphics card is under that list. Uh, typically, if you have an NVIDIA Quadro or an AMD Fire Pro, those are generally certified, but you can always double check. All right, that's pretty much a 101 on the SolidWorks interface. I hope this helps, and I hope this uh, answers any of your general questions. This is Adam Hughes with Go Engineer signing off.